Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And again, we're just looking at Daniel 11, verse 40, trying to finish off uh, drawing up these lines of the different spans that connect the historical application with the present truth application. Uh, But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have this morning and for each person who joins in these studies and watches them on YouTube. We pray that you can bless each person, that your Holy Spirit can work upon their hearts, and that you can show us our need of you, that you can correct anything that we may be not understanding completely. Also, Lord, we just pray that uh, you can be with, with us in our trials and difficulties that we face each day. Help us in the decisions that we make, and help the light from your word to comfort us and to guide us. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good morning, everyone. I spent a bit of time looking at some of these things in a bit more detail. Not that we're not looking at it in detail already, but. So, in uh, verse 40, we have had um, these numeric symbols be significant as far as spans of time. And as I said, that we have a historic application. So, for instance, if we look at Daniel 11, verse 40, at the time of the end, the time of the end is 1798. Now, we know that we have a time of the end that's also in 1989. So we know that there's this iteration of this time of the end, which is talked about earlier in, I think it's verse, I can't remember if it's verse 30. But so we have uh, the indignation, the end of the indignation which is the time of the end. And then we have the time appointed, which is 1844. And so that period of time from 1798 to 1844, 45 years, is obviously significant. So at the time of the end, we have these symbols. We can add those together, 6256 and 7093, and we get 13,349 days from June 7th 1982 to December 24th, 2018. And that's um, the 2018 date. Something in my personal life, but it's basically when uh, the last I was at the School of the Prophets as far as with any sort of blessing. We did go to Canada, came back, uh, but weren't welcome when we came back. So we actually didn't stay at the School of the Prophets. We stayed at... um, somebody's house while we were, while we were there before we went back. And then we have, uh, well, we know the King of the South and the King of the North added together a uh, span of time from my birthday to November 9th, 2019, uh, which we know 391 dealing with Islam is going to connect that 391 and a half and also from Ezekiel's prophecy. And then we have this word push. Now, we looked a bit at this yesterday. 5055. And if we count from 911, and we just do a regular cardinal count, it goes to July 15th, 2015. Now I put there, you can maybe see that in the footnote there, right at the bottom of that page. It says Islam study. Now I looked this up. Now one of the things is July 15th, 2015 is a symbolic date. That is, it's a date that I'll go over here, that we have in the prophecy of Josiah Litch when we start to look at the detail. Now, we see at the top there, that's just the regular line with the hour, the day, the month, and the year in reverse. So it's a year, month, a day, and hour, which is how Josiah Litch actually counted it. We put the hour at the end, the 15 days. And we know that there's going to be this ultimatum delivered on August 11th. Now, we also have this symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, when we uh, look on the diagram below, uh, I'm just zooming a bit more here. You can see there's a thing called the Convention of London, and that's July 15th, 1840. So uh, that's a Gregorian date. Now, the date in uh, the 26th day of the fourth month 
which lines up with July 27th, 1840, is, uh, so that's the Julian date, July 15th, which is July 27th. So you can see in that century, there's 12 days between the Julian and the Gregorian date, that is the Julian lags behind by 12 days in the 1800s, 19th century. So, so that July 15th date on the Gregorian calendar is the date, it's at the Convention of London where the ultimatum is signed, and that's going to be delivered on August 11th, 1840. So we can also see, so you, when you add the 15 and the 12 together, there's 27 days between the Convention of London and the date that the ultimatum is delivered on August 11th. So, so it gives us that symbolic date. Now, as far as to the actual uh, time, so this is the schedule of the camp meeting. So just to make this really clear, uh, what it is. So here we have this camp meeting schedule. And you can see it's actually the first presentation I do is July 20th. Now, the, the camp meeting is going to start on the Friday, uh, July 17th. And then the first Sabbath is July 18th, which is interesting. Uh, you can see there you got Michael and Dwayne are presenting on Friday evening. On the Saturday, it's going to be Michael, Parminder, Michael, Parminder, then Dwayne twice. Right? It's kind of interesting looking back at this history. And then you're going to see I do three presentations on, on Islam. So that's going to be on the seven trumpets, actually. So here in, in the first presentation, I go through the first four trumpets, and then I do the first and second trumpet on July 21st. And then on the Wednesday, I do the seventh trumpet and the third woe. So I address that. <clears throat> and those videos are on my, my YouTube channel. Uh, I think they're actually the oldest posted videos on my channel. So obviously, the July 15th date doesn't line up with uh, the camp meeting, though it's just before. Another interesting detail regarding this is that... Ramadan is going to end at sunset on July 17th. Now, that is, Ramadan is a month. So if we go into 2015, I'll show you this here. So here we go, 2015, and we're going to go to July 17, and you're going to see here, that that's the last day of Ramadan. So at sunset, on that evening that the camp meeting starts, uh, that's going to be the end of Ramadan. So the camp meeting starts just right at the end of Ramadan. Now, um, you can see here on, on the rabbinic calendar, it's going to be the first day of the fifth month, uh, but it's the last day of the third month on the biblical calendar. So... So it seems it seems rather interesting, and 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 that is that um, the tenth month is going to begin on July eighteenth, right? So if you go one day more, you'll see uh, the first of Shawal. However, you say that is July eighteenth. That's going to be the Sabbath in two thousand fifteen. So any thoughts on on this July fifteenth? Is this because we have a symbol? A symbol that ties this to Josiah, which is prophecy, and to a date just before the camp meeting. So are we are we forcing this in as a symbol? So I put here Islam study, but I'm going to put here, I'm going to put it's the Convention of London, 1840, and it's uh, near the end of Ramadan, right? So... Um, it's technically, you know, five days later, seven trumpets. Now, whether the five days means anything, any thoughts on that? Five days, is that significant? Um, I guess I'll put it in the camp meeting. Could the five days be paralleled with uh, the 0.5 and the 391.5, or the five months or the 150 years? Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking, is that five becomes that symbol. Uh, the point five, the five, um, uh, and also, you know, five as the separation from the foolish and the wise. 
virgins, right? So, yeah, so there's some symbols there. And the camp meeting begins as Ramadan is ending. So I should put here on 17th. So this is going to be the camp meeting where I, I present the 26th day of the fourth month. And, and so, you know, it seems to sort of fit. It's not as nice a fit. It would have been nice if, you know, it was the Hebrew number was 5060, and that would have went exactly to the first day of my presentation. But this ties in a bunch of other symbols. It actually creates more symbols by showing this and just giving us this July 15th date, the end of Ramadan, beginning, you know, ending on July 17th, transferring into July 18th. And then, of course, the camp meeting itself, which is going to have my presentation. So I think it ties together a bunch of symbols. May not be as neat, but there's actually more symbols by doing this. So, so we have the pushing, right, at him. And then we have, uh, the whirlwind, like a whirlwind. And we have, so we have two different things with that. We have adding those together, 14,096 days inclusive from December 24th, 1979 to July 27th, 2018. Again, these symbols of Islam show up in these spans of time and which is going to be connected with the prediction of November 9th, 2019, which is tied with the 391 and a half days. So again, a symbol that comes from Islam and also from Ezekiel. Um, then we have uh, another footnote here, uh, 53 days of the whirlwind. So it's just a reference to that from Newsweek, December 25th, 1989, volume 114, issue 26, page 26. Eastern European Journal of Events in 1989 that helped crumble the communist bloc, right? And then we have uh, the next one is this 6571, and 6571 is the horseman. So the horseman there, American military pressure, is how we interpreted that in uh, historic application. We haven't put in the present truth application for that. Um, but that number 6571, uh, we can use it as a span of time. So it's the number of days from 9-11 to September 7th, 2019, Jeff's last sermon at Lambert, where he's going to call out the rebellion of Baal Peor. So that's an interesting one. And then we have uh, the ships 591. It's 591 days from March 27th, 2019 to November 7th, 2020. Now, so the March 27th, 2019, it's obviously the center of the 329 days between October 13th, 2018, and September 7th, that date above there, uh, 2019. So that's obviously important. It's connecting these different elements together within the movement regarding the, these predictions, right? So everything seems to be falling into place they're falling into this structure now jeff's birthday november 7th 2020 we don't have a specific event for that other than jeff's birthday and, and it's going to be his uh, uh 69th birthday as he turned 65 in 2016 so his 69th birthday and and that would relate to the 69 weeks and and there was another thing that the 69 Related to what was it again? Jeff's prayer. The what? June 9th. Jeff's prayer on June the 9th, 17 or 18. Yeah. So it's going to tie in those symbols together. So Jeff's prayer that's going to mark that 126 days. Then when we add 7393 plus 6, Jeff age in 2020, it's 69, right? He's, he's born in 41, right? Or 51, or what is it? Yeah. So he's going to. 51. Yeah. Okay. And then we add the 7393. Now the 7393 is the chariots. So this was the one that we had a little bit of trouble with on its own, but I'm going to look at that one. And, and the horsemen. So we add those together and we get this other span of time. We're actually we're adding not just that and the many ships. So 7393, 6, 
571, 7227, and 591. And we get the number 21,782. It's a fairly long period of time. If we, we look at it as a span of time, which we can look at in a minute again, uh, it's not going to go any place that we understand. But uh, it does rep represent July 18, 2020. So it's got all of those five digits are in July 18, 2020. This doesn't have the zeros, which don't count. Okay, so uh, 21,782 as a span of time. So if I started, let's say, on this earliest date that we have, this December 24th, 1979, and we counted 21,782 days, it would bring us to 1939. So it's just too long of a span to fit in there. It may connect with something else, but I don't know. Like if I go to my birthday, for instance, you know, 63, it's going to bring us to 2022, September 26, 2022. As far as I know, I don't know any significance of that. Now, just another thing. So I just put this in. Now, instead of my birthday, I put my first wife's birthday, December 7th, which is obviously a symbolic date, uh, 1964. And that's going to bring us to uh, July 27th. 2024. So that's going to bring us to uh, July 27th this year, which is a Sabbath. But I don't know if that's significant. As a symbol, it is, right? So what we could say is it connects a December 7th date with that. Now, where I want to go next is to some stuff I was working on in regards to this line. And, you know, to me, that's just enough that that number adding all of those things together gives us the July 18, 2020 date. Now, I did look at the 7393, the chariots, and I looked at the Soviet-Afghan war. So, of course, we know chariots represent war, um, military. So I counted the number of days to 9-11, and it's going to be 7933 days. Now, that's an inclusive count. So... If I, if I counted the number of days, it's going to be more than the Hebrew number, but it's just you, the two center uh, numerals are switched, right? They exchange places. I mean, we know this is allowed, but the significance of this is that it's going to make this span of time longer than the Hebrew number by 540 days. Right. So the difference between that, so it's going to be seven, nine, three, three days, but the Hebrew number is seven, three, nine, three. And so it's going to be 540 days. Is there any significance in the 540? I mean, we have the fifth day of the fourth month as a symbol. Anything else? I mean, do we accept that this, this is valid taking that number, the chariots? The Soviet Afghan War connecting it to 9/11 with that number of days <laughs> seems to fit. I mean, six times nine is 54, so six nineties would be 540. They've got the six and the nine in there again. Yeah, yeah. So we do have have these these symbols that that all that are all tying together. So all of these become part of a structure, and and all of these symbols start to come together. You know, July 15th, July 27th, you know, we have in that, uh, we, we don't have it in here, but we know when we go, because I didn't put the June 9th date in there, uh, but I could put it in, just that I don't have a span of time for it, other than the 126 days. But we know from, from the June 9th, if you count the 126 days to October 13th, and you look at the center date, the center date is actually August 11th. So August 11th is here as well in the structure. It's just not shown here. So that 63 days, 63 days that we see from September 7th to November 9th to the first day or January 11th, 2020, the 126 days, the 63 weeks, uh, 441 days to the March 27th date. That's just tying us back to the March 27th date in 2019 which is the center of that structure. So, so we just have all of these, these symbols 
this September 7th then be marked by the 6,571 days. So a lot of symbols, uh, but things that we should be familiar with. And I'm just looking at some other things here, but that's probably enough. So anyway, it ties all of these things together. And we can, and what this is showing us. So, you know, for people watching, we understand the historical application of this verse, Daniel 11 verse 40. So that's not affected by this. None of these symbols are giving us that interpretation of, of the historical application. But we can connect then the historical application to events within the movement itself. And since the historical application is already our history, we wouldn't have a broader application for the present truth. It would just affect what has happened in this movement. And if we think about it even a little bit further, we know that this is Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, is really what begins this movement. You know, We don't have 9-11 when this movement begins. We're not talking about Islam per se. You know, there's no, we, we just, like, all of this stuff that we've been through, July 18th, November 9th, none of that is, was part of the message until later, but it comes from an understanding of this message. So we can, we know how these things connect with our history. And so we're just establishing something that's already there. So maybe if, if some of these numbers we say, well, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't do that with those numbers. But most of them fit in a very solid way. And they are part of a structure. They do speak to each other. Like even the fact of, you know, he shall enter into the countries and you got 776 for countries. Well, there's 776 cardinal days from November 9th to December 25th from 89 to 91, which is the time that the Soviet Union falls, right? So... It's an inclusive count of 777 days, but it's just a cardinal count of 776. So the only, you know, we have a few words here that we haven't yet uh, looked at the Hebrew numbers, like 935. Now, 935, we, we should know what 935 is uh, as a symbol. I know Iran probably knows. Let's see if he remembers, because we've run into this before. It's five times 187. So again, we have the five in there. And of course, the context of these numbers. So we have to remember that this verse was written, you know, by Daniel a long time ago, long before the Strong's uh, concordance existed, long before we had Strong's numbers. And yet these numbers bring symbols to this movement in understanding the present truth message. So God has guided these things. Right. He's guided these numbers and God could have chose different words to give to Daniel to write out this prophecy. He could have used different Hebrew words for some of the same things. Right. He could have used a little bit different forms or syntactical structures, which would have changed some of the numbers. Uh, so God chose this and guided it so that we could look at these symbols. So we now have 935. And that, that ties us to the number five that we have here already represented, uh, especially when you see the three fives there of the push, right? Uh, five, zero, five, five. And then you have this, uh, uh, he shall enter, which is five times 187. And we have something for countries. What we haven't done is the word overflow and pass over. We haven't done anything for those uh, here. Now we have looked at overflow before. Uh, any thoughts or comments? So 7857, let's take a look at this and see if this uh, goes anywhere. So we, we could divide the number by 365 and a quarter, and it's going to be a period of 21 years. And I, I know we did this one before. 21 years and 187 days, right? So we'll put that footnote in there. What's the number again? 78. Five, seven. Okay, so we have that span of time, 21 years, 187 days. And, and we did something with it here before. Um, I don't know if you remember what we did with it. I know it's 
it's in our notes. So let me see. Yeah. So seven, eight, five, eight, and seven, eight, five, seven are both 21 years and 187 days. I don't know if we used them as a span of time. I think it was just the symbol of the 21 years and 187, or uh, yeah, 21 years and 187 days. Now, if we did something like, well, 21 years, we think about 2001, and I know we've done this, but it, it, from what we could tell before, you know, it brought us to March 17th, 2023. Uh, I don't think we have anything significant for that. That's a Friday. If we did an inclusive count, it'd bring us to March 16th, 2023. So I don't know. So that that's, you know, if we put 21 years, that's where it would go. You know, if we went to like 1989 and November 9th, and we counted that many days, 7857, seven, it's going to bring us to May 15th, 2011. Nothing significant there. So I don't see hey, anything. Theodore. Hey, Theodore, why are you screen black? Because I'm looking at something else, and so it just makes the screen blank. It's just the computer does that. So anyway, I was looking at some other things, so it made the screen go blank. It wasn't sharing properly. Okay, so anyway, we have something there symbolically that ties us to July 18th as a symbol. Okay, 21 years and 187 days. Well, you have midnight too as as a 21 or midway. Yeah, yeah, back to July 21st, 1844, the symbol there. Okay, and then and then we have uh, shall overflow and pass over. So Passover, five, six, seven, four, as as a span of time, this is going to be like 15 years and 15 years and 195 days. I'm just going to go blank again. I have to share the screen so I go like this, and you'll see what I'm doing. So again, if I went, you know, to September 11th, 2001, and I counted that span of time, five, six, seven, four. To bring me to March 25th, 2017. Now, um, if I did an inclusive count, it would bring me to March 24th, 2017. And that's going to be um, part of a, a structure that we have, the 777 chiasm. So in the 777 chiasm, it's going to start on, uh, so I can show you this here. So if I go to 2012, right, and I go to December 21st, Right. And I count seven, seven, seven days. That's going to be my 52nd birthday, which connects to the symbol. It's 52 years. 52 prophetic years is 18,720 days. Right. And then I count seven, seven, seven days again. And that brings me to March 24th, 2017. So it's a date that's part of our structure. And then you have an 183 days to September 23rd, 2017. That's where I'm, that's the Feast of Trumpets. That's the um, Revelation 12 sign prophecy. That's where I present July 18 as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. 777 days later is November 9th, 2019. And then 70, 777 days after that. December 25th, 2021. So I think it's significant in that it it fits into part of the structure that we already have. So I'm going to put a footnote here. H5674 equals 15 years and 195 days from, so we go from September 11th, 2001, and it will be an inclusive count. From 9-11 oops, to March 24th, 2017. I'll know what that date is. And so when I write my notes, I'll put more detail in there. Okay, so that means all of the numbers, all the Hebrew numbers in that verse can tie in some way with the structure that we have, and they become part of a structure together. Any questions on that? I mean, I think it's pretty remarkable that, you know, we can take some Hebrew numbers and we can connect them to our history, right, in this way, to these significant dates that are parts of these structures. And they interrelate to each other. So it, it's really representing our message more than anything. 
Any any thoughts? Oh, on amen to that. I'm just giving a resounding amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we know that the um, what was the other one? We had the lexical sum of the verse. I'm trying to remember what did we write that in here? I think I think we didn't really finish that. You know what the number meant for the whole verse. Just trying to remember. It was like. 96,226, I think. Yeah, 96,226. So what did we do with the 96,226? We had it going back to a date um, in 1756, um, right? Was that it? May 25th. So, and that 96,226 brought us to November 9th, 2019. So, so we didn't put that in the diagram, but did we put it in a foot, footnote at all? I don't see it anywhere. So I do want to put that in there. Okay. So we just would have about the lexical sum of this verse itself. Lexical sum of Strong's numbers for Daniel 11 verse 40 is 96226, which equals, um, May 25th, which is going to be, what was it going to be? The, the s- second month. Oh, 25th day of the second month. Yeah. Okay. So the 25th day of the second month. Now, of course, it looks, you know, that's the biblical day. So I'm just going to be there. Okay. So it's the 25th day of the second month, but it's the 25th day of the fifth month. So the fifth month, 25th day. So it's 525. Uh, which equals this 777 symbol. And uh, I should put the year that it's in, uh, 1756. Now, 1756, we don't have anything for that date, per se. We do have it, like, specific. Uh, we do know it It has to do with the Seven Years' War. Um, so I'm just going to put here, we'll say the start of seven years or okay so lots of different symbols uh, attached to that so that's just the lexical sum so i think these are pretty powerful symbols so we, we take this verse it has all of these symbols and um you know in in these hebrew numbers and it relates to our history um and that I guess I have to put in here. I'll just do, do this like this. I need more space. Lexical sum, Daniel 11 verse 40 is, and I need to put 2, 9, 11. Or no, 2, uh, 11, 9, 19. Right? Which 11, 9, 19 is going to start 777 days. And I'll put here, uh, that the biblical date here is, uh, 25th day of the 12th month. Okay. So it has that 25th day of the 12th month. So, so we'll see things like this, the 25th day of the 12th month, uh, you know, November 19th, September 11th, all of these dates being tied together in different ways to other events in our history or the numbers relating to spans of time, uh, that have symbols like 187 days. Anything else with these numbers? So I'm pretty satisfied with this, with the numbers themselves, uh, that they tie to our symbols. Now, uh, we're, we're tying this to what's happening between the Omega and Future for America. So we start looking more at the present truth application. So at the time of the end, now the time of the end, 1798, obviously parallels 1989. But here, are we going to take at the time of the end when the king of the south shall push at him? Uh, this time of the end would have to relate to in the present truth application to November 9th, 2019. Are we okay with that? That marking that as the time of the end? Because we know November 9th, 2019 connects to November 9th, 1989, which is the time of the end. But since this is a present truth application, we're not going to say that 1798 is 1989, because 1989 
in the present truth application, the king of the north comes against the king of the south. But here, we're first going to have the king of the south come against the king of the north. So the king of the south shall push at him. Now here, you know, it's going to war against the papacy. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be FFA. So the idea that FFA represents, or the papacy represents FFA, that is, there is a certain characteristic regarding FFA that has to be addressed. And it's going to be addressed by God, by this conflict that exists within the movement. That is, this movement is not ready to do the work that God has asked us to do. And if we think about it a bit, why did God allow this to happen to his movement? Because God ha is all powerful. I mean, he can stop Satan from doing anything. But this this happened. And can we see God's hand in it? Or do we just attribute this is all just Satan attacking, you know, this movement and, you know, God had nothing to do with it? Or do we see God's hand, his purposes being worked out in this conflict, conflict with the Omega, just as. And remember, this is the rebellion of Baal Peor. Why did why did God allow what happened? And remember, even with the rebellion of Baal Peor, we have Balaam and his prophecies, right? He, he's trying to curse Israel, but he's going to bless them. And, he, and his blessings are going to be prophecies. And then, and then what he's going to decide to do is, well, he, you know, he gives a suggestion that, you know, if they sin, then, then God's protection will be removed. And is the movement needing to be corrected? Has it done something that it shouldn't be doing? Now we know that Jeff is going to retire, right? April 8th, uh, 2019. Just after he passes the reign over to Parminder, we're going to have that betrayal of Judas. So there's lots, lots of things happening here. So having the papacy representing FFA, is it just that there's a characteristic in FFA that has to be corrected? Any thoughts on that? Does it seem unfair to FFA? I mean, we talked about it. Well, you know, I don't think God, you know, God isn't being unfair. He's trying to purge and make white his people. And we need to stay on the right track. We need to stay on the foundations. Yeah. And then we'll receive more light. If we're, if we're dwelling on the foundations, if we're, if we're based on that, then of course we lead us step by step. Yeah. So, so then we're going to see, you know, the king of the north, that is future for America is going to come against the USSR atheistic communism, right? And that is Jeff is going to come against, uh, Parminder's movement and the date that we would have here. That, that actually precedes November 9th. So one of the things about the time at the end here is we have November 9th, but we could maybe add to this August 29th to November 9th, 2019. So, or we can even, we could even, you know, put in April 8th. We could, we could go back to March maybe as well, but we have the rebellion at Baal PR on August 29th to November 9th. So it's this, this period of time, the time of the end. So there's something about this. Uh, let me see. I'm going to just put this up. So the August 29th date. So that's going to be on a Thursday. They have this re this rebellion. And, and why do we mark that? Date? That's the date that the papal power is is also being exercised in Parminder's movement, right? I think that's the date where Stephen Odilio and John Mark are brought before the tribunal. Right. So we mark that that's 220 years after the death of Pope Pius VI. So it's the 27th day of the fifth month on the biblical calendar. I don't see anything else about it. But anyway, I'm just going to put that there. So when Jeff begins to push, now he's going to come against him. And we're going to say uh, September 7th, 2019. It's obviously September 7th, 2019 to November 9th, 2019. So I'm just putting, oh, I shouldn't have put that there. This is Parminder's movement. So this needs to go here. That's what I wanted to do. And then this is going to be Parminder's wokeism. So just describing what it is. It's this wokeism. So we have the chariots and horsemen, American military pressure. So we're going to have, this is going to represent specifically in our movement, 
um, this is FFA coming against Parminder's movement. And there's military pressure. So obviously military pressure in, in this 6571, that's going to go to the September 7th, 2019 date. So uh, this is going to be Jeff calling out Parminder's movement. So that uh, number, 6571, goes from 9-11 to September 7th, 2019. So that's when Jeff comes against him with this military pressure. And then we're going to say many ships, that's economic pressure. Now, we know what's going to happen there. There's going to be this fight over Lambert Church, right? Do people remember that and the websites? Correct. Right. Yeah. So, so there is um, a wrestling of control over FFA's assets. It's so various types of assets. So we can see how that, that happens. So we have the military pressure represents just Jeff calling them out. And then the economic pressure represents that fight over control. Now, he shall enter into the countries. Uh, what would that represent in, well, historically, we're saying the entry in, into the countries has to do with the king of the north defeating the Soviet Union. And uh, the symbols that we have there, um, the 187 is five times 187 is 935. And then we have the 777 structure. So to me, this has to do with the reassertion of uh, the July 18, 2020 prediction. Does that make sense? Because the countries is the 776, right? Which represents the 777. And, and I think this is important, you know, historically, because somebody has said, and, and I'm just going by what I haven't watched the video yet of Jeff's presentation, where he's going to um, basically, whether he does or somebody else does, they talk about that Parminder's time setting is connected to July 18, 2020. You know, I, I would think that they would probably do that. They would know historically that uh, Parminder reje rejected July 18, 2020. And he rejected it because the basis for his time setting was completely different than the basis for the July 18, 2020 prediction. They're, they're not on the same ground. But there is this suggestion, whoever suggested it, that somehow that has to do with Parminder's nonsense. and And obviously... It doesn't. July 18th was never accepted by Parminder or Tess and strongly opposed. So as soon as it was known, and, and Jeff goes to Brazil, I believe, and he's told by Tess, you know, you can't support July 18, 2020. Uh, Jeff came back pretty defeated with that uh, information. And he couldn't look me directly in the eye after that. And that's in early November. 2018. Well, that's, that's the peril of following man or woman instead of following God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right, because he should have li listened to the arguments of it, but instead he just gave it over to, he just surrendered it, right, without, without a fight. Uh, but that's going to be reasserted, of course. Okay, so we've got this overflow and pass over. So the reasserting of the July 18, 2020 prediction. And, and that's going to happen sort of between September 7th and November 9th. And then we have this overflow. So we know it represents 21 years and 187 days, right? As a symbol, we, we can't place it anywhere specifically. But this overflowing is representative of the Sunday law itself. And so we have this overflow and pass over. So what does that represent in the movement? Do, would we look at the pandemic? What would we do with that? I don't think the COVID thing was as bad as what's happening right now in the movement. I think this is more of an overflow than the COVID scam ever was. Okay. Just as a symbol, it symbolizes the Sunday law. Yeah. Okay. And as I said before, if you're going to retract 
what God has already shown us. We're going to keep going backwards and eventually we will, ex I'm not talking for myself, but hopefully accept the Sunday law and all the other papal fallacies and be lost. Okay, so um, if we go, so I'm just, um, I, I added these together. So I added uh, 7857, that's uh, the word overflow, and Passover 5674, and I get 13,531. Now I know I've looked at this before, right? So we looked at the 13531 uh, before. It was, um, uh, so let me see, but I don't remember what we did with it. Um, maybe it's in our notes. Do we have anything there? No. No. So I don't have it, I don't have it written down anywhere. I know I dealt with it before, but maybe I didn't find anything with it. So if we start, so if I start with the start of the Soviet Afghan war, brings me to January 9th, 2017. If I go to the Pope and Reagan meeting, one three five three one, that brings me to June twenty fourth, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, so I can't find anything that readily would address that span of time. So I don't know what to do with it. I, I, I mean, it's a number that's uh, got the one fifty three in it, but you know, thirteen thirty five, fifteen thirty three. It's all symbolized in there, but I don't know if I would uh, then attribute that to anything that I see here. So that's just looking at the number. But um, when we're going to deal with the overflowing Passover, we know that that historically that this idea is is in that battle between the king of the, the northern Israel and southern Israel, and that um, northern Israel is going to uh, you know, be in, attacking with Assyria, uh, or, or with Syria, pardon me, coming against, uh, Judah, right? Southern Israel. And Judah's gonna seek the support of Assyria against, uh, Northern Israel and Syria. But God says that when you do that, you're not gonna have my support, and Assyria will overflow and pass over and come up even unto the neck, right? So I don't know if we would say that that's the first time this happens, but it's significant time that it happens and is a symbol of the Sunday law, right? So that's in Isaiah chapter 8, and it is a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south. Yeah, and it's exactly the same Hebrew numbers. It's translated as, he shall pass through Judah, he shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel. And, and of course, the stretching out of the wings means that you're under his control, right? That Assyria is going to be controlling Judah at that time. And that's in Isaiah 8, verse 8, which is a symbol, symbol that we obviously have already addressed. So anything, any, how would we address then what this is representing. So we say it has maybe has to do with the pandemic because that's a type of the Sunday law. Now I put there December 25th, 2021, the 777 days. But we know that in that history, so we have uh, in um, Odilio's study uh, dealing with the pandemic, he shows that there's this history from November to December that he marks. And what is he, he's marking? He's marking the start of the pandemic and what is it in 2021 that he's marking? Now, it's going to be, you know, I think it's November 17th or something. But we're just going to put November to December. And I'm going to get rid of that. Or maybe say parallels. Now, the pandemic doesn't end officially in December 25th, 2021. But what, what's occurring in that time? We talked about this before. Well, you were calling, mainly you were calling the movement to study together as Ellen White and the Bible advise. Yeah, but we have this, the, but Odilio did this study dealing with, I can't think of it, the mandates and different things. So what did he mark? Because aren't we going to get some mandates in that history? Is that what's going to happen? 
I'm trying to remember. I can't find it here. I'm trying to find Odelia's study. Here I know where it is. Well, we can parallel the locking down and the masking and all the other tyrannical garbage that is foisted on us to what's happening now, where, where your link was taken down. We weren't supposed to study with you, and now we're being told, apparently, I haven't heard it myself, but I'm hearing it from others, that unless we go along with everything Jeff is saying, then we're cut off. If that isn't tyranny, I don't know what is, and it's really shameful since it's coming from people that are professing to follow God. So, so you're trying to, to, to address what's happening in the movement, me being cut down. Okay, so, I mean, that, that's... Not just you, it's everybody. Yeah. It's everybody yeah. who doesn't belong, okay. but like a, like a, a somebody with a with the with the frontal lobe surgically removed or damaged, you know. Sorry, okay. I'm not buying it. Okay, so what we can say is the pandemic, in which the movement rejects the message of July 18, 2020. Right. So July 18. July 18, 2020. So there's going to be this parallel to this period of time. Now, I just, I, I just can't find his study. I got the video of his study, which I don't want to look at. It's probably in my download folder, but you got a lot of stuff in there. And he's going to do that study in February of 2022, I believe. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's, there's definitely something that, um, is it in 2022 or 2021? I don't know. That wouldn't make sense. I just can't find it. I'm going to have to bring that up tomorrow. Yeah, February 12, 2022. I got the video. I uh, just can't find the paper. Ah, here it is. It's a PDF. I thought it was in PowerPoint. So it's this paper. Now, the video, his video uh, was taken down. So... We always have to be careful what we say about this stuff, but it's going to be this timeline. So he's got November 17th, 2019, you have patient zero, and he's going to have this timeline. So it's going to be the enforcement, the declared. So it's going to be declaration and the enforcement of the vaccine mandate. December, encompass the December 25th way mark of the 777 structure. So that's what I'm talking about. So in that period of time in which the movement is being tested is this period of time where we come to the vaccine mandate. And that's going to parallel the opposition to the message. Does that make sense? That is what's happening externally is paralleling how the message is being treated. Oh, man. And didn't Jeff have, have something to say about that, too, didn't was it Jeff that said that the things that are going on externally reflect what is going on internally? Like as goes the world, so goes the church and vice versa. I'm yeah. almost certain I heard him say. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, he's going to be saying that a lot before this time, right? Obviously. But we can see that, that there's this parallel. So that's the main thing that I want to point, point out in this regard. Okay. So we got that settled. So we can see that there's uh, this period of 777 days as a symbol that's going to be this time from patient zero to the, these uh, declaration and this enforcement. And, and he has some other things dealing there, 1117, 311, 114, and he puts together this, these symbols that, that he uses, which we don't need to look at now. We looked at this before. But it helps us understand Daniel 11, verse 40, in the present truth application, that all of these things fit together, that these numbers, these spans of time, the symbols of the numbers, and the parallel between the historical application and what has happened in this movement are very clear. I don't think it's something that's, you know, we're, we're not having to twist anything to fit. It, it's very clear that it fits. So... Well, let's uh, close with prayer. Uh, dear, gracious, heavenly Father, thank you for the study today, uh, for all your blessings and the things that we have found. And we just ask for your continued presence as we look at these things in the remaining day tomorrow, I guess, Thursday, to, tomorrow's Thursday. So uh, study this week. We just pray that we can tie some of these things together and present them in a clear way. Help us as, in our personal study 
and to understand these things. And bless those watching this video. And we ask for your angels' care and protection over our loved ones. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.